What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing. The Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff series will continue its conversation with you concerning the complete history of boxing. This is part two of a conversation that we previously had concerning the complete history of the colored division. We're starting out with the heavyweights, but we'll continue with Sam McVay, known as the Oxnard Cyclone. He stood five foot ten and a half inches, had a 75 inch reach. He fought from 1902 to 1921. Had a complete career of 102 total bouts, 76 wins, 13 losses, 62 knockouts, and he was stopped five times. He faced Sam Lankford 15 times, battling Jim Johnson seven times, Harry Wills five times, and Jack Johnson three times. He'd be in the ring with Jeff Clark, the Joplin Ghost, Jim Barry, and Jack Thompson. He faced Joe Jeanette February 20th, 1909, 20 rounds. It was considered for the current heavyweight championship title that was vacated by Jack Johnson, who was newly crowned as the world heavyweight champion in 1908 when he would knock out Tommy Burns, Noah Brusso in 14 rounds in Sydney, Australia. It would be for Jack Johnson's vacant title. April 17, 1909, Oxnard Cyclone would lose his colored heavyweight championship title in 49 rounds to Joe Jeanette, the Iron Man of West Hoboken. Two hours and 24 minutes with $6,000 on the line. To this day, in my opinion, that was the most brutal, exciting heavyweight championship contest in any establishment in boxing history. Neither man could breathe, neither man can continue, but they pushed themselves to the limit. And it was one of the most untalked about heavyweight championship bouts, but it was probably one of the most brutal and exciting bouts of all times. December 11th, 1909, Paris, France. These men would mix it up for 30 rounds. It would become a draw. Joe Jeanette and Sam McVeigh. You can't mention one name without the other. But who was Joe Jeanette? He was the color champion April 17th, 1909, when he would defeat Sam McVeigh. He was born August 26th, 1879 in North Bergen, New Jersey. He died July 2nd, 1958. He was 78 years of age at the time of his death. He was known as the Iron Man of West Hoboken. Jeremiah Jeanette stood 5 foot 10 inches, had a 74 inch reach, had a complete record of 104 bouts, 83 wins, 10 losses, 69 knockouts with 10 draws. He would be in a ring with John Lester Johnson, Bill Tate, Sam Langford, battling Jim Johnson, Harry Wills, George Compartier, Black Bill, Jeff Clark, the Joplin Ghost, George Kid Cotton, Sam Langford, who was a colored champion five times, September 6, 1910, April 8, 1912, Sam Langford, May 1, 1914, Harry Wills, November 26, 1914, June 29, 1915, May 1, 1917, Bill Tate will be one of the most Underrated fighters, very tall. He was a sparring partner, but he can handle himself in the ring. Now, who was Bill Tate? He was a color champion January 25th, 1917, when he would defeat Sam Langford. Born November 5th, 1893 in Montgomery, Alabama. He died August 10th, 1953, just 59 years of age at the time of his rest. He would reside in Chicago, Illinois. He stood six foot six inches, had an 81-inch reach. He was a heavyweight. His name was William George Tate. Bill Tate was a corner man alongside with George Chip, or Joe Chip, Harry Will Sr. When Jack Dempsey would take on Jess Willard, 1919. They were in the corner of Jack Dempsey. The contest took place in Toledo, Ohio. And it was a brutal contest. A half a dozen teeth was allegedly knocked out of Jess Willard's mouth. Broken ribs, broken jaw, broken eye socket. Fractured ankles and a fractured kneecap from the way to the fall. On January 2nd, 1922, Bill Tate would defeat colored heavyweight champion Harry Wills by a first round disqualification. He had a record of 53 total bouts, 27 wins, 20 losses, 22 knockouts, and he was stopped 11 times. Being in a ring with Cecil Seal Harris, Bearcat Wright, Tut Jackson, George Godfrey, Ralph House Ware, Kid Norford, Harry Wills, Jack Thompson, George Kid Cotton, Joe Jeanette, just to name a few. George Godfrey, the color champion, November 8th, 1926. 
lost it to Larry Gans. Thebe Sylvester Williams, born January 25th, 1897 in Mobile, Alabama. He would die August 13th, 1947 in Leaperville, Pennsylvania. He was known as the Leaperville Shadow or the Black Shadow of Mobile, Alabama. He stood six foot two and a half inches, had a 72, I'm sorry, 79 and a half inch reach as heavyweight. He had a record of 126 total bouts, 99 wins, 21 losses, 81 knockouts. He was stopped six times with two jaws. He was a heavyweight. Being in the ring with Al Walker, who was a color champion, stood six foot heavyweight face Obi Walker. Now, Obi Walker was a fighter, and we'll talk about him, but he was in the ring with Alma Violent Ray 14 times. He was a brutal heavyweight. April 9th, 1931, April 24th, 1931. He would lose the title to Obi Walker, who was 22 years of age at the time. They fought at the Philadelphia Arena, October 1933. George Goffey was 36 years old, and Obi Walker was 22 years old. George Goffey fought for the vacant belt that was stripped in 1926 from Harry Wills, the Brown Panther, after he was disqualified from fouls and excessive holding, allegedly, when he was in a ring with Jack Sharkey, the Boston Garb. Now, Obi Walker, October 9th, 1933, he was known as the Bearcat, born September 19th, 1911, in Crockland, Georgia. He died May 23rd, 1989. He was 77 years of age at the time of his death, and he was residing in Atlanta, Georgia. I met Obi Walker. He stood 5 foot 8 inches. He was a heavyweight. Fought from 1929 and 1946. Had a complete record of 121 total bouts. 93 wins, 18 losses, 7 draws, and 63 knockouts. He became the colored champion. He faced Elmer Violet Ray 14 times between January 19, 1937 and June 24, 1941. Between March 2, 1939 and June 19, 1939, he would face Leroy Hayes three times. October 9, 1933, he would defeat George Godfrey at the Philadelphia Arena. George Godfrey lost his claim to the Colored Heavyweight Championship title to Larry Gans. July 20, 1935, he lost his title to Obi Walker. Toronto, Ontario, Canada. He was a heavyweight, born December 12, 1901, in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. He died July 26, 1983. He was 81 years of age at the time of his death, and he would reside in Canada. He stood six foot two and a half inches and had a 79 inch reach. He had a record of 145 total bouts, 117 wins, 63 knockouts, 22 losses, and he was stopped 14 times with five draws. June 23rd, 1923. June 6th, 1942 was his reign. Dixie Kid was KO'd in two rounds at the uh, Toronto Ortorio Arena. At the, they call it the Arena Gardens. The referee would wave off the contest after five knockdowns. And he KO'd from the final blow of 24-year-old Larry Gans. Speaking of the Leaperville Shadow. July 20th, 1935, Obi Walker defeated colored heavyweight champion Larry Gans. 15 rounds. The referee was Jack Smith. He raised the hands of Obi Walker. Colored heavyweight championship title was abolished when Joe Lewis became the world heavyweight champion, June 22nd, 1937, when he knocks out James J. Braddock in eight rounds at Comiskey Park in Chicago. The black heavyweight champion was declared by... Klondike Haynes, May 8, 1899, in Chicago, Illinois, when he defeated Jack Johnson in his eighth professional bout, Johnson's third pro bout. Frank Charles became declared black heavyweight champion when he de defeated George Byers. Now, Frank Charles, who was the crafty Texan, was a middleweight, and he staked claim as a heavyweight colored champion. But he would give up that claim while he was a middleweight, he would lose to a young version of Jack Johnson, the Galveston Giant. July 13, 1909, Sam Langford laid claim to the Black Heavyweight Championship crown when he knocked out Klondike Haynes after his uh, denial of his uh, second shot to Colored Heavyweight Championship title. What do I mean? He was in the ring with Jack Johnson in 1906 for the Colored Heavyweight Championship title, but he walked in the ring weighing 156 pounds. And Jack Johnson obviously was a true heavyweight at that time. But Sam Lankford would eventually become the heavyweight champion of the world uh, in the color division five separate times, and he would knock out more 
heavyweights than Jack Johnson and Joe Jannett and Harry Wills combined. So to me, he was a true heavyweight champion, you know, five times and more knockouts. His size was probably the issue. He had a long reach of close to 84 inches. He was a phenomenal specimen, was Sam Langford. Langford defeated Dixie Kidd and Klondike Haynes. He stamped his chin with a beautiful overhand right. He defeated Joe Jeanette. You're talking about some great fighters during that time. When Sam Langford faced Joe Jeanette, he fought him several times. He fought him two weeks before he faced Jack Johnson in 1906 for the Colored Heavyweight Championship title, and he fractured his hand in the bout with Joe Jeanette. Now, the Colored Light Heavyweight title would come and play May 30th, 1921. The color bar was created for the Light Heavyweight Championship. The colored bar was prevented, uh, it was designed to prevent black fighters from having opportunities of world title shots in all weight divisions. So the colored light heavyweight championship title was created May 30th, 1921. Belmont, Virginia. Kid Norfolk was given the opportunity to face Harlem, New York's Lee Anderson. He became, it, it, it was one of his, somewhat of a gift, if you will, because of his two fights with Harry Grepp. And Harry Grab had offered to 